Kind History. In 2004, Kind was founded by Daniel Lubetsky with the purpose to bring genuine kindness to the world through healthy snacks. Kind describes itself as a not only for profit. And according to Fortune.com, Kind actually supports customer generated projects that help the community. Kind Movement. The Kind Movement has the mission of inspiring kindness and an overall goal of creating a kind state of mind in the world. According to KindSnacks.com and HowKindOfYou.com, Kind accomplishes this through their hashtag KindAwesome cards. Kind has an organic structure. This is shown by the company's flexibility and adaptability, which is necessary for a successful expansion. Kind wants to empower their employees to innovate with products and marketing through Kind Acts. They have decentralized decision making within their organization, and employees are more inclined to share ideas under less direct supervision. Now we're going to look at the financials of the organization. According to Hoover's, Kind experiences annual sales of over 221 million. Additionally, they have 500 employees, and that number is growing. In fact, the company has experienced growth of over 425% in the last three years. So what is the problem? The main question is, how does Kind maintain its company culture while undergoing such rapid expansion? And that moves us into Kind culture. Now we will provide a brief overview of, the, of Kind's culture. For Kind, culture makes its brand. Founder Daniel Lubitsky created Kind with the vision of doing good. A serial entrepreneur, he wanted to create a company that would have a positive impact on the world. To learn more about Kind's culture, we interviewed Kind University Ambassador UMD Junior Ali Romano. Our main takeaway from the interview was that Kind made her feel valued right away. Over the summer, they, they flew her out to Chicago where she attended a special training with other Kind University Ambassadors with the goal to learn about Kind's culture. One day, they were sent out into the city of Chicago with a box of Kind bars and were told to distribute them as they see fit. Their mission on campus is to spread brand awareness through clubs that share Kind's values. For example, if there's a club that specializes in a certain charity, Allie May goes distribute Kind bars to that club in order to spread Kind's message and culture. Using the organizational culture framework, we provided a culture assessment for Kind. We found that Kind has high team orientation. Kind employees prefer to function in teams instead of alone. This is proven from our interview with Ali Romano in that most of our activities at the Kind University Ambassador Training were performed in teams. Kind also has high people orientation. Managers focus on employee happiness. Ali said her manager has the goal to visit every single campus where she has Kind University Ambassadors and checks up with her regularly. Lastly, Kind has high attention to detail. They must uphold the kind message and brand, which is why they spend so much time and energy focusing on the culture and the message that kind provides. We found that kind has low aggressiveness. Employees are more cooperative than aggressive, which fits in with their kind culture. And last week, we found that kind has low outcome orientation. They're more about the message than the sales. In conclusion, culture is kind's biggest asset. And as Kime aims to build a message based on its culture, the bars will sell themselves. And not only will the bars sell themselves, but employees will be happier. And we found through our survey that people tend to value and want to work for companies that have strong company culture. What exactly will permit the continuity of a small, close-knit feel as new employees are rapidly hired? Our plan for Kind narrows in on three areas of focus, recruitment, education, and motivation. As we know, the people make the culture. As KIND rapidly expands, it must seek to revitalize its recruitment process, ensuring that any and all new employees not only embody KIND culture, but also possess unique skills and backgrounds that will push for continued company growth, advancement, and innovation. To accomplish this, we recommend that KIND integrates cultural fit into the hiring process. Interviews will include a personality assessment in order to gauge if the goals and values of potential employees align with those of the company. Current employees, especially those working in human resources, will be highly educated on the ideal requirements for new hires and will work closely with them to make sure that they understand and will comply with the kind people, culture, and organizational structure. 
Each office, especially newly established ones, will therefore contain a mixture of new and experienced employees so that there is plenty of opportunity for everyone to learn from each other and build key relationships. So here at KIND we really value kindness. Can you give me an example of an act of kindness that you initiated? Of course. So I believe kindness can be anywhere from just passing a smile along to a stranger or it can be giving a compliment to someone who's been working really hard on a project always giving uh, positive feedback and making people feel very valued and appreciated at all times. This connects to our goal of greater employee education overall. In addition to providing new employees with insight on what the company culture should be like, it will be vital to explicitly promote examples of positive company interactions and provide training to help turn ideas into action. Our plans to accomplish this involve implementing team building exercises in the office, creating promotional brand videos to inspire employees, and providing at least one off-site workshop for new hires. Our hope is that these and other similar undertakings will allow kind employees to participate fully in the ideal company culture. We also recognize the importance of proper motivational techniques to ensuring that employees feel happy, valued, and appreciated. All key elements to promoting a positive and productive kind culture. By building close, trusting relationships through workshops, training, and interactive exercises, employees can feel empowered to achieve their goals, gain confidence, and work towards self-actualization. But we can also help by providing intrinsic and extrinsic motivators to reward behavior that emulates ideal company culture. Our main motivational initiative will be to implement Kind Fridays in every office. This program is based on the company's existing Kind Movement campaign, but Kind Fridays will be even more personalized. Employees will have the opportunity to recognize and reward one another for their behavior around the office by giving out a kind bar and a handwritten message to their coworkers and teammates. This may be to thank a teammate for assistance on a project, to congratulate them on a job well done, or any number of acts worth acknowledging. The goal is again aimed at ensuring employees feel secure, valued, and respected so that they can focus on building relationships which makes offices, even at a large and growing company, feel smaller, closer, and more connected. All of our recommended solutions come at a cost. Kind Fridays will have a starting cost of $26,000 per year, but will vary depending on how many new hires we take on in the future. Additionally, training employees can get a bit pricey. Data from the World Economic Outport reports that mid-sized organizations with 500 to 10,000 employees spend on average $838 per employee on training and development. In order to implement our solution, most of our money will be spent on the hiring process. We want to hire the right people, people who will fit into our kind culture. Burson by Deloitte estimates the national average cost per hire is $4,000. However, cost per hire will vary dramatically from one business to another depending on the variety and volume of skills sought after. We will use this money to develop an effective hiring process that will fill our offices with the right kind of people. In order for us to implement our solution, we will use Lewin's three-step model for organizational change. The first step of this model is unfreeze, which will require us to use driving and restraining forces to overcome the current status quo. This leads into the movement phase, which focuses on the actual introduction of changes and a shift to a new equilibrium state. It is important that there is a strong continual momentum during this stage in order for changes to be accepted in the final stage of refreezing. The objective of this last step of the model is to stabilize the new state of the organization and prevent employees from reverting back to old habits. We feel that this is the best change model to use for our recommendations because it will allow us to efficiently implement our new solution in a way that will encourage quick acceptance while reducing some of the expected resistance. In terms of individual resistance, the greatest source will be habit. People tend to rely on their pre-programmed responses to situations and when confronted with change have a tendency to react in the way in which they are accustomed. When implementing changes in an organization, this creates resistance because individuals are reluctant to change their habits and fit new organizational norms. We hope to address this issue through the intrinsic nature of the change model we are using, as well as by placing a focus on individual needs and understanding. Furthermore, there will also be organizational resistance through structural inertia. There are certain processes and formalized regulations that maintain stability within an organization. And so when implementing change, resistance will arise due to a mismatch between these existing processes and the new cultural needs. In order to combat this, it is vital that new sources of stability are established. In order to successfully implement our proposed solution, we will need the cooperation and support of kind leadership. 
The type of leadership that is best fit to achieve our vision is employee-oriented. If leaders show that they trust and respect their employees, they will be able to impose new norms and ideals and be able to lead by example. This style of leadership is not only well aligned with the company culture that we are trying to encourage, but is also an appropriate approach for its implementation because it requires leaders to be agreeable and flexible. With these three solutions and the help of leadership, Kind will be able to maintain its corporate culture, which will lead to overall employee happiness. This happiness will lead the company to success.